because I think I feel like people know what the stakes are. They do all of their planning. They know it's not about surviving week to week anymore. It's about literally winning. So it seems like the final case are almost always like stellar and she like she couldn't even finish it and it's just like come on like you you don't deserve to be in the final yeah. it, like it's not a bird it's not a plane it's superhero slate it's a modern podcast where we talk about everything that's great like movies tv superheroes it's superhero slate Hello, everyone, and welcome to Superhero Slate, the show where we run down the latest superhero entertainment news. We love TV, movies, and superheroes, so let's talk it all out. My name is Chris Dillard. And my name is Mike Royer. And this week, we watched Tenet. Oh, we did it. We did. We got a review episode up. We'll have spoiler-free thoughts uh, in a few. The Mandalorian drops tons of new Star Wars info on us, Mike. Ooh, it's an info the, dump. Yeah, the biggest, the biggest of all time. <laughs> Yeah, uh, so uh, be prepared for that. We get a look at Superman by Gindy Tartakovsky. Uh, Ooh. You know, also known, known for, for the, the creator, I would say, of the visual aesthetic of the animated Clone Wars. I mean, it started in 2D, but um, Filoni definitely riffed on his uh, designs for the 3D yeah, characters. Yeah, so lots of stuff going on this week, Mike. Tons of great things. Um, how was your Thanksgiving? I, oh, I, I, we didn't get to really talk too much that day. You're busy spending with people, but f- full of delicious food. Uh, we, I, I employed a new strategy this year of instead of spatchcocking the turkey like we usually do, which is kind of the speed up the cooking process. I went full hog, if you will, and I completely broke down the turkey like three days ahead of time. So I broke it down to its component parts. I had to watch like a YouTube video how to do it like four times in a row because it's really because you have to like retain all the information because like you can't be holding turkey raw turkey covered hands and be hitting the space bar in your computer and over and over again <laughs> to watch this video about to break down a turkey but i successfully did it and i was able to take those parts put them in ziploc bags get them brined and then i had early access like a pre-order to a video game chris i had early access to the carcass so i was able to roast it along with the neck and i made my stock and my gravy man i was like so prepped i had everything done ahead of time it was great turkey turned out great i i've been eating leftovers all weekend and it's been a great time, so it's been a f- it's it's been a feast. It's been a feast yeah. in the Royer household, and it, it's been great. Oh, that's good. That's good. And and you had you had people come over, but again, you you took all the safety precautions. Oh, Everyone had to, to, have a clear to, test. to get a to get an invite to this exclusive event, you not only had to have a negative COVID test, as you had to cross your heart and hope to die, like uh, for lack of a better term, that that you quarantined after it too. So we were. I mean, I guess you can never be totally sure in life anymore. But we were ninety nine point nine percent sure uh the very very small amount of people in our wet bedroom apartment were uh covid free and on top of that we have like a really really nice air purifier uh for our apartment that you really need in california especially when there's lots of fires so we had that out in the main area on high we had windows open so even if there was you know even a little bit of COVID, hopefully it, you know, the, the airflow helped everything. So we did everything, we did everything, uh, that we could in our power and it was a great time. It, it was nice to feel like, uh, a little bit of normalcy for the first time in a while, you know, combining that with watching Tenet, something brand new action packed that I hadn't seen before, uh, making me feel like the normal world again. And then, you know, sitting down and eating dinner with people, uh, was great because mm-hmm. outside of this weekend, there have not been new movies and we have not been seeing people so um we didn't we didn't exactly we weren't exactly out there advertising that we were that we were having just yeah. a very few amount of people over because you can't give people that idea we not everybody was going to be as crazy particular as we were like leading up to the leading up to the day like we basically had the band hammer ready like if anybody you know was saying anything if they felt anything they were getting kicked out people were you know people were already wishy-washy to begin with so uh, i'm just glad to i'm glad to report that the day went off very very well everyone's feeling very very healthy here a few days later i guess we're not technically out of the window of risk yet but we are doing our doing our best so basically the year 2020 uh when you have people over you have to go out of your way to tell people how safe it was and we were very very safe so that's how my thanksgiving went chris your your meticulous turkey video you sent showing your your heating index connected to your turkey in the oven was oh yeah it was high tech in the kitchen man yeah yeah i did the other thing i showed you um i i me and my wife stayed home we didn't have anyone over we didn't go anywhere 
So we bought one of these small butterball three pound breasts, um, mm-hmm. turkey breasts. Uh, threw it in the air fryer, threw a spake after after I brined it overnight, and an uh, hour later had a whole turkey. It was um, very delicious. Yeah, that's great, man. So uh, I'd recommend it if you're looking for something. If you got if you have a basket air or, or like the one that takes the rotisserie in it, I think I would recommend that wholeheartedly as well. Uh, especially if you got like a, a couple people, you're not feeding a, an army or militia, if you will, for that <laughs> regard. But that's going to lead us into our first topic. We are bringing you. Probably the biggest snack corner ever. So big, <laughs> Mike has given it its own name. Yeah, it's called the Quarren Feast, Quarren and Feast. Chris has given it its own time code in the podcast. So if you think it's crazy when we talk about snacks at the beginning of the podcast because you're here for superhero news, uh, you can easily skip this one by checking the time codes. But as I told Chris a few minutes ago before we hit record, we've recorded 300 episodes before today. Those 300 episodes are for you. The 301st episode, I think it's okay to indulge a little bit That's right. into what we like to do, which talk about snacks at the top of the show. And I got a lot of snacks here. Let's get some it, Let's get some tape on the microphone. I got some snacks here. Do you oh, hear yeah. that? So, that ASMR deliciousness. <laughs> so it's not just about talking about snacks. We're going to be eating these some of these for the very first time for you guys. We've been saving mm. these for several months. Mike sent me a care package. I sent him a care package this year. We are we are well indulged in 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 all things almost all things Kit Kat at this rate. Yeah, uh, uh, big got, Kit Kat fans between. I've the two got of us. five in front of me, and I can't eat the fifth one yet. And and that I got to give a shout out to a uh, listener of the show, friend of the show, Adam Nemec, who sent this. Uh, he got I believe he got it from Canada. He's on the Canadian border, but it's a Japanese Kit Kat. That's like a creme brulee style, uh, and I don't this have a sounds, torch. This thing sounds crazy. Yeah, he said we'd have to blowtorch this thing to get the full effect out of it. So <laughs> no, I don't think we can do that live on the show. So you'll I, just have to wait for a review. Some yeah. Other so time. I'll keep that one. But the other ones I got. So uh, we have um, Mike. I sent Mike uh, without knowing this. Uh, we have uh, matcha green tea Kit Kats. Mm-hmm. We have strawberry flavored Kit Kats. And then the two I have that Mike doesn't have because I just got them yesterday. I have dark. Uh, it's not dark. It's just orange chocolate Kit Kats mm-hmm. and chestnut. Kit Kats, which feels yeah. very of the season. Yeah, you know. and what I have that Chris doesn't have is I have a holdover here. Now, Chris has tried this one already, so it's not super exclusive for him. It's the Witch's Brew Kit Kat, yeah. which we we, uh, we we tirelessly confirmed that this is an indeed a flavor of yes. Kit Kat. It's not, just, it's not just green colored. It has a marshmallow cream on the inside, which Kit Kats yep. don't usually have. And then over here, this is exclusive that my wife and I ordered from Canada. Uh, I don't know if it came from Canada or just this kind of candy warehouse just has leftover ones, but these are, believe it or not, chocolate popcorn M&Ms. So uh, I don't know. I believe maybe these came out earlier this year. Um, yeah, the, this... they're about right now. I, I they actually just came out with a, a popcorn mini M&M minis too. Oh, maybe I don't. It's hard to say because it's like there's a football M&M guy on the front of it. He's got like the whole like you know black lines underneath his eyes, and he's holding an NFL. It's like NFL mm. co-sponsored. So I don't know exactly when this well, is supposed to jive with. Um, but uh, I tried these already because I, I you know I didn't know we were going to be trying these on the podcast. Uh, but I'm going to eat a couple of them anyway. Yeah. They're very crunchy. They kind of have that waferyness on the inside. And I will tell you, my wife did not care for them, but I have to say, I actually really do like them because they taste like the M and M's. Like if you ever get popcorn at the movies and you throw your, you know, your chocolate candy treat into the popcorn, you kind of get that buttery popcorn flavor on the candy when you eat it. And that's almost exactly what these taste like. It's kind of uncanny. You know, I know a lot of people are turned off maybe by the popcorn jelly belly. You're not getting that kind of experience. This isn't like a weird, like savory, buttery candy that you're coming across. This really just tastes like M&Ms that were dumped in along with your movie theater popcorn. And I'm jiving with it. My wife didn't like it so much, even though she does like M&Ms in her popcorn. So it really could split people. But the popcorn M&Ms, the popcorn flavored M&M's or whatever you want to call them. If you see those, uh, I, I don't think you'll be disappointed I, to try them out. I've not seen them. I, I definitely want to try them. I think I told you that before you got them. I'm like, I really want to get these and I haven't seen them yet. But I'm going to take your um, chocolate popcorn M&M's and raise you white chocolate peppermint M&M's here. It's got a oh. red M&M with a Santa hat on it. Uh, and, 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 and Mike knows me. Uh, what I called myself earlier, the white chocolate Casanova. Uh, the lover <laughs> of white chocolate. So these are just red and white M&M's. But when you 
take them out. You can smell <laughs> like that mint, kind of like an Andy's mint, right? I love how I can. I love how I can hear you sniffing them over there. Oh yeah, yeah. So we, we got these new mics for a reason. So I'm gonna pop a couple of these yeah. in because I, I, I mean, it's it's not like a normal M M&M, and M, right? Um, it's got Ooh. that white chocolate, that hardness to it, but it's also got like that very peculiar um, pepper. It's a strong peppermint, like you know when you get a candy cane. Yeah. So while you're chewing on these, uh, do these have like a core, or are these more like the classic M and M's that's like solid chocolate all the way through? It is. It is a core of um, the peppermint chocolate mixture. Oh, so it's like, is it like a creamy mixture on the inside? Yes. Yes, it is. Oh, okay. So this might be more comparable to kind of like those fudgy brownie M and M's, or like well, the caramel M and M's that have like a, a core of moltenness have, on the inside. Have you had the uh, candy cane Hershey Kisses before? Yes, I have it. That those. that is what the inside of these is pretty much. Oh, is, okay. Without the crunchy texture to it. Gotcha. Because uh, it's a white chocolate on the outside. The inside's a soft Hershey Kiss texture of that that candy cane Hershey Kiss and the candy cane thing. So if you're looking for something holly, again, I was like, oh, I'm gonna take these to work and put them in a bowl for people. I'm like, no, 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 no. Get your get, grab your hands out of my bowl. I don't want that. I'm just gonna <laughs> keep them at home. So yeah, I, I was able to try a uh, peppermint milkshake uh, uh, over the weekend, and I would highly recommend those as well. Uh, I, I would say it's almost like a cousin to the uh, Shamrock Shake. I looked it up, Chris, and I looked it up before the podcast started. The Shamrock Shake is just like a generic mint extract, so it's not peppermint. So you're getting a totally different mint experience o- mm. over there with the peppermint shake. Yeah, we love we love our candy here. So let's go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and, and I'm going to say, let's go for the matcha green tea ones first, Mike. Matcha green tea. All so right. We let's gotta, go into gotta the matcha green so we're going to do these at the same time. So you've had Here these before. This is not your first time. Yeah. This is going to be a nightmare for people like me who oh, hate yes. hearing chewing on podcasts. Uh-huh. So uh, if you're like me, I, I totally apologize. I'm going to try to chew further away from the mic. Yes. Yeah, skip ahead if you want, but I'm, I've got, mine are kind of a little bit melted here um, together. Um, but they they still look good. I'm chewing right now. If you can't tell, <laughs> I was like, man, something smells um, leafy, uh, grassy in here. It's the green tea. It's the green tea. Yeah, and like I said, I've had these before. Um, definitely not disappointed eating them again. This is the perfect type of candy for your very stickler friends that don't like sweets. Like this one is borderline almost not sweet enough which is like the perfect range for some people out there um personally i would like maybe a little bit more sweetness in it but you know yeah like i said if you got that friend or buddy out there it's like oh i don't like sweets and they're they're insufferable and you can't stand them because you love candy and they're like they never eat it they actually might like this one i i'm a big green tea drinker one of my favorite starbucks drinks is a a non-fat green tea latte if you will Mm -hmm. um because it is sweet but it's not like I don't feel like, you know, when you eat like a Skittle or like a, something with strong sugar to it, right? Mm-hmm. It, it's a subtle sweetness that comes from that green tea. And, and I can see there are people who absolutely loathe green tea and will not like the earthy tones that this puts off. But I, I think you combine that that green tea texture and that chocolate with the crunch of the wafer really gives it more life than you think it would here. Um, yeah, this isn't a very highly processed matcha. You do kind of get those granules throughout the chocolate. So yeah, you got you got to be a matcha person at, at the front, I think, for this one. Yeah, I, I agree with that. So that's I that's that's definitely a recommend if you find it. Um, yeah, I I really want to I want I really want to go back in time here, just about a month, and I want to try this witch's brew real quick. Yeah, I know so, sorry, had sorry, this I forgot one. I forgot about that one. No, that's totally fine because I've had this uh, green tea one before. So okay, witch's brew. Witch's brew. I don't. I'm have surprised. One. This so is one that you sent me, and I'm surprised yeah. it's not melted it's like a fully formed kit kat so that's great um oh i like this one this one kind of reminds me a little bit of that uh birthday kit kat that you can get here in the united states that was i believe out during the um summer months it has yeah i can Mm. kind of i kind of can vibe yeah i'm actually surprised that i can discern marshmallow right because marshmallow is a very mellow flavor um but I'm actually totally getting it out of this Kit Kat. Yeah, it's it's very very um, marshmallow. Like it's stronger than you think it would, and and that's that's <laughs> great. But it's not like overpowering it either. It's going to be so hard to record this podcast when we start talking about the news because I have all this unopened candy in front of me, 
that I haven't eaten all of it yet, and I'm just going to be staring at it the whole time, just wanting to crave it. But yeah, that one's great. I, I would be happy to see Witch's Brew come back next year. Yeah, it's definitely uh, a surprise. I got that in my candy bowl at work um, <laughs> because they got them, and I'm like, I don't really want to buy a whole bag. So I got I stole one for me and, and one for Mike out of there. Yeah. Um, so another one we have together is the strawberry. Um, Ooh, the strawberry yeah. Another Japanese one. So let's open these up here. Yeah, I, I have to say, like these Japanese Kit Kats, they're like a big deal, especially if you're in the United States, because these things are hella expensive. Mm-hmm. Like you can sometimes find like these really big boxes that give you these different flavors. The most recent one that was advertised Ooh. to me on Instagram is like $70 just for, I think, maybe 16 flavors. So, I mean, like, the fact that you sent this to me is just very, 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 very helpful. Well, I and I appreciate it. I, I appreciate you, Mike. I want you to try this. Because we talk about snacks all the time. We never eat them. But I'll tell you, opening this, I get that strong smell of Nesquik strawberry powder. <laughs> like, like, like it's nobody's business uh, just opening it. And it's like melted in my fingers here, so I want to bite into it. Well, this one has a um, – this one's much tartar – in the middle than I thought it was. It kind of has like a tart center. Oh. Because the only comparison I could levy against this is the strawberry Pocky, which is a little bit easier to obtain in the United States because Pocky's a little bit more of a, less of a novelty over here stateside now, and they have a strawberry one. But that's a much of a, that's, that's a, more of a smoother strawberry. This one has like a, a tart core in the middle of yeah, it. Yeah, it's something in that wafer. It's like a, like a sour strawberry, if you will. Um, yeah. Kind of gives it a zing. I didn't expect that. Yeah, I don't know if it's my, I don't know if it's my favorite of the three, but I definitely don't hate it. I, there, I would be there, inter- there's a time for it, and it's not yeah. all the time. That kind of idea makes me excited to try other fruit flavors in the same vein. Like I'd love to try a blueberry like that, maybe even like a blackberry. Um, oh, a nice yeah, raspberry I, I, would be. Ooh, mm-hmm. yeah, I love that tart center, man. Okay. Yeah, that's great. That's all great. Right. Well, I'm going to jump in then, uh, since you said that, an orange, my chocolate orange one uh, uh, that I have here. So I'm going yeah, to I'm gonna go into that. So what other, uh, what other... Well, I can speak to chocolate yeah. orange while you're, while you're trying it over there. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> a funny story of uh, my wife one year for uh, Christmas was trying to fill out my stocking, and she knew I had a strong opinion about those chocolate oranges that you can buy here stateside. It's like a, it's not a little literal orange. It's like a, it's like a chocolate orange shaped like an orange, and it's flavored with, a, I'm guessing, like orange extract. And you then the commercial, you like crack it against the, you know, the, um, the, the table, and all the slices come apart. And she was just like, hmm. I know my husband has strong appealings about this. He either loves this or he hates this. And then she got it for me. And then when I opened it up, uh, you know, it took me a while, uh, weeks later to say, yeah, just for future reference, I don't like these. I'm not a big fan of chocolate and uh, an orange. Not necessarily chocolate and citrus, but yeah, just chocolate and orange does not vibe well, vibe with me. As I wrap this one up here, it's probably the thickest of all these I've eaten so far. <laughs> oh, it, yeah? is, it is heavily chocolate. It is chocolate orange. You would hate it. <laughs> um, it is very much like you go um, to what fancy hotels where they put the orange chocolate on your pillows mm-hmm. or whatever. That's what that is. Um, yeah, I don't know. know maybe yeah, I'm maybe not, the wafer experience would make me enjoy it a little bit more. Oh, but I don't know. I don't know. I don't. I'm not a huge fan of that one. I don't like chocolate yeah. straight up to begin with. Mm-hmm. So everyone's like, "Well, why are you doing these? Well, these aren't normal chocolates. These are different flavors." But that is. That is some heavy chocolate. I'm going to have to have a drink. This this is the posterity we do for Snack Corner. The next kind of American Kit Kat duo that's coming out right now is the mocha coffee flavored one. And I don't like coffee. I never drink it. Um, But I'm going to try it anyway for the posterity of being a snack completionist. Well, then I'm going to go ahead and just jump right into, hopefully, this washes my palate off, this chestnut flavored one. And I have no idea what a chestnut is. It's it's white chocolate covered... (laughs) I think I feel like I've eaten a chestnut before, maybe in like a bowl of mixed nuts, but I don't think I could point it out to you. For some reason, I'm I'm imagining maybe like a macadamia nut texture, possibly. Uh, But I couldn't pick out the flavor; that just kind of tastes like a nut. Um, It's like a subtle, uh, subtle maple kind of flavor. Mm, It's sweet, very sweet, but it's like a savory sweet. Now, is this a Japanese Kit Kat or is this from Canada? No, this is Japanese. These are all Japanese. So it's just easier to get some of these in Canada, apparently. Oh, I mean, um, I, I love maple flavored uh, uh, candies, so this one sounds like it'd be right up my alley. It was. It's very subtle. I, I actually, again, like I said, never ha- knowing what a chestnut tastes like. Um, this is white chocolate, white goo in the wafers. Um, very, very, very subtle, very heavy, uh, savory uh, caramel, but not heavy caramel, I would say. 
people are probably yelling at me what a chestnut is. <laughs> I'm like, all now, I know is that you roast chestnuts on an open fire in that Christmas song. So. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it makes sense for the season. Now, I should say, um, for for off the podcast, I, I must bring up three different candy bars that we may be, I may be talking about here on the future. Um, mm-hmm. One of them is the, a chocolate covered payday. Now, this is a candy bar that Chris sent me. That this is something I was, I I have begged that it, that it exists somewhere out in the world, and apparently it does. It's just not in the United States because it's very similar to a baby Ruth. Now, a baby Ruth is basically a payday covered in chocolate, but. The, the nice thing about the chocolate covered payday, if you can ever secure one from uh, Canada, is it tastes the same, but the salt content's a little bit higher, which I really, really like. It really kind of cuts through um, all of the chocolate, but also it's my favorite thing about a payday. It's like if you really want that, that hit of like sugar and salt, I always go for a payday. And man, putting chocolate on top of it just makes it even better. So shout out to you, Chris, for sending me one of those. You sent me two of them. I got a whole other one here that I'm looking at, so I'm looking forward to that. But then also, if you're a Canadian listener, um, I don't know if these are Canadian necessarily. These actually might be from the UK. You know, if you're listening out there, let me know. I ordered two Lion Bars. Now, these are, they look like their normal candy bar shape, but I believe they have wafers on the inside. And since we just did a whole, like, 10 minutes talking about wafer Kit Kats, I'm looking forward to trying those. But you know, this is a big candy bar. This is something I want to sit down and enjoy. I'm not going to do it on the podcast. So, uh, you know, maybe uh, tune in next week or the next time we do a Snack Corner and we'll talk about um, all of these different candy bars. Yeah bars again but oh man chris is great my mouth is like literally well, watering like you know like the the back of the jowls when like you just want to oh, yeah. eat more it's like it's juicing right now well, i feel like that's tmi for the podcast but well, man, I've i got, just want to eat more candy i've got one more thing here the surprise the dark horse here that i didn't expect to get uh, salted caramel oreos oh straight out of japan uh they <laughs> they come in little packs here there's two packs in here of multiple things. So actually, it's like, uh, can you hear it? The, the yeah. paper packs. It's not a regular Oreo package. Uh, if I can get it now, open. now the the if these could possibly dethrone the gingerbread Oreos, they will not. Uh, that would that would be impressive. We talked about those last time we talked Ooh. about snacks. Ooh. Those Oreos are next level. Um, I feel like these might be a bit of a letdown. Uh, just uh, because I feel like the more basic flavors you go with with Oreo, the more disappointed you get. It smells strong. It smells strong. (laughs) I don't. It's a very crisp wafer. I'll tell you that right now. This is a a strong Oreo, but the the chocolate's overwhelming it. Um, If you're a fan of chocolate, you might and and caramel, you might like it. But I'm not a straight fan of this. Why does Japan get all the good flavors? I feel like we just need to be a little bit more picky over here in the United States. Demand more flavors in in our candies and snacks because it's not fair. That Japan, this island country with much less people, get all of these other options that we don't get. Yeah, probably because people wouldn't buy them here, um, <laughs> or or we, you know, people might buy too many of them. But um, yeah, Oreos, okay. It's fine. If you like chocolate and caramel, I think it'd be fine. But it's not for me. I'm not a, I'm not the audience's cookies after. But I'm glad I, I got to try it here on the show yeah. with you guys. Well, I mean, it wouldn't be a true corn feast. In the in the sake of superhero slate, if we didn't have a little bit of news yeah. to go along with the snacks, which this is just becoming a whole another podcast at this point in time, but I don't care. This is a three hundred and first episode. We get to talk about this for a little bit longer. But that's right. We we we're going to talk about. It. But I was able to discover three D Doritos are coming back uh, Whoa, to America in January. Huge, huge. In, in two flavors, you get chili cheese nacho. Or spicy ranch. Now, if you don't remember the 3D Dorito, it's it's like a puffed. I believe it's possibly a puffed corn because I'm sure they kind of stuck with the with the corn uh, okay. DNA of the Dorito. But it's it's puffed. It's it's exactly what it sounds like. You can find other kind of puffed snacks in in the grocery aisle right now. But these are like puffed little triangles. So I don't even know what new math they had to invent to create an inflated triangle, or what exactly is going on here. What original philosopher drew out this um, on on a scroll of canvas? But I remember them back in the day. 
It had a very distinct flavor because I believe the recipe kind of overall of the base Dorito kind of changes the experience and you get a totally different texture because there's so much more air involved. And then mm -hmm. I think there's a proprietary flavoring going over the Doritos. I don't think they're just taking the straight up dust that goes on the flat Doritos and putting them on the 3D one. I think they're inventing brand new tweaks to those flavors. I, I could be wrong, but uh, spicy ranch and, and chili cheese nacho sounds yeah. uh, sublime to me and and I think these are dropping January. Yeah. 18th. So if you're not here for the superhero news anymore and you're just totally on board for the snacks, you got to make sure well, you're subscribed because I'm sure we'll be talking about these as soon as we you, can get them. You know what January 18th is close to, right? The Super uh, Bowl. Oh, yeah. I guess it, that's it, uh, getting a little close to it. And if they have that this year, who knows? Yeah, that, um, that's true. <laughs> I, I don't want to. I don't want to put the cart before the horse, but that's like a week, two weeks before the Super Bowl, which, you know. Uh, that's where I think chili cheese nacho will really strike me as that. Yeah. But like, it's mm -hmm. not just again. No, it's not nacho cheese. It's not cooler ranch. Mm -hmm. It's a spicy ranch and chili cheese nacho. Uh, but they're they're very much an updated, modern looking bag compared to their previous incarnations. I am excited to try them again. I we you people probably think we're just complete fat asses out here. <laughs> these candies. We don't we don't indulge all the time. We sample these because we like them, and then we sh we we share the news. It's, we're all about we're foodies at heart, right? Who the, the inevitable thing that brings everyone together are snacks and, and, and that. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I'm, I'm very excited for that. So um, I actually just got a, a beverage delivered here from my lovely wife. Thank you. Um, <laughs> because I'm out of water. And I told her, I'm like, I'm, I'm thirsty. I have um, yeah. Kroger's sparkling water. It's peach sparkling water here to, Ooh, to sample great. here. To wrap up this corn stream, Mike, yeah. with my, no. my, my liquid. Well, corn feast. Corn feast uh, to go into the, the corn cart stream. before the horse yeah. once again. But now let's pull the gigantic levers on this uh, train and get it back on the tracks. Yeah. Tune back in about a half hour later, uh -huh. back to your normally scheduled superhero slate, where we can finally talk about the corn stream. What have we been watching before we finally get into the third part of the show, which is the meat of the show, the news? Huh. So, corn stream, we've obviously all been stuck inside watching tons of stuff over this pandemic. And, uh, Chris, it's a holiday season, yes. lots of different holidays the past couple weeks. Man, we're talking Halloween movies. You got some fall Thanksgiving movies. We finally breached the threshold into Christmas movies. Uh, but what did you watch, oh, yeah. Chris, uh, this week? It's tradition, uh, and it should be tradition in every household, uh, that you watch planes, trains, and automobiles before Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. or at least on Thanksgiving, because it is one of the few movies that is about Thanksgiving. Uh, yes. Everyone else is trying to get home at Christmas or other holidays. Uh, I think Easter has more movies than this. Um, <laughs> but Plain Trains Automobiles is the story of a um, businessman um, who is played by, I just lost it. Um, Steve Martin? Steve Mar I wanna, I, yeah, it's Steve Martin. That's a Martin Troy. It's not Martin Troy. <laughs> Steve Martin like, trying, to get, businessman? Yeah. trying to get home to his family for Thanksgiving uh, from New York to, I believe, Chicago. Um, uh, it's always Chicago. These holiday movies always got to involve Chicago. It's, so it's, jo it's a John Hughes movie from the 80s, mm -hmm. of course. And he is uh, met uh, with delay after delay. And it all starts with meeting Del Griffith, played by John Candy, um, who is a uh, shower curtain ring sal traveling shower curtain ring salesman. Uh, mm -hmm. And he is just a clueless guy who has a good heart but is dumb as a box of rocks. And... The journey across this, they go from uh, trying to fly with delays to, you know, taking a, a train to taking buses and cars till, till they finally get home. But there are several classic moments from this, and I, I, w I would give anyone uh, a chance to watch it and have a good time. This is classic 80s comedy. It is R-rated simply because of one scene, Mike. Uh, <laughs> they he drops Mart uh, Steve Martin drops uh, a ton of F-bombs after he does not get his rental car. Oh, uh, that's right. Yeah, uh, to the that. to the the lady. Um, so if if you have uh, delicate ears or that, but that's the only scene in the movie that has any language. Uh, everything else is pretty, pretty good. Uh, I didn't put it on here, but I also revisited uh, a, a a classic film from the early two thousands. Grip uh, Snatch uh, with uh, uh, I'm losing the name of of uh, Jason Statham, one of his <laughs> earlier movies with. Um, mm -hmm. I can't think of the director. I'm, I'm awful. Uh, we ate all that candy, Chris. Is, we're we're the, off our we're off our um, yeah um, our exactly right. We can't, we can't we can't. Uh, oh but, but, yeah. <laughs> um, but either way, I watched Snatch this week, and I I always I love that because you know there's always like like Dags. 
like dags you know dags he's like oh dogs yeah i like dogs uh <laughs> i like uh, caravans too but it's it's a fun british movie one of those heist movies where all the plot points come together guy Ritchie, that's who directed it um so i, I did watch that this week uh, i wanted to just call it out because sometimes you know we always talk about watching new stuff but it's fun to go back and watch old stuff uh when mm-hmm. you want to and you don't need, really need to pay attention but it's on because you're enjoying it so um that that's what i i did right now there's some other stuff we watched we'll talk about later uh and we watched and played stuff this week so we'll talk about that in the news but let's go ahead and jump into you because you shifted gears you jumped right over thanksgiving oh, and right yeah. into the holiday spirit thanksgiving is done it's officially time to watch the holiday fair and i'm gonna start with two streaming series on netflix um that are holiday related and this is kind of new i feel like streaming uh services are going to start doing this a little bit more but episodic christmas stuff not just straight alone standalone movies these are uh seasons of shows that could possibly roll into season two or maybe they could even uh work as their own standalone miniseries i don't really know it depends on how the algorithm uh appreciates them over time but Mm -hmm. the first one up this actually came out in 2009 19 last year that I just totally ignored because I watched the trailer for it and didn't really look up my alley but it's called Merry Happy Whatever starring Dennis Quaid and it is a multi-cam show and if you're not familiar with that uh, nomenclature it means there's a live studio audience and uh, you know I'll give it uh, I'll give it credit that um, usually those don't cut the best trailers because it's all about just sitting down and watching it and enjoying the jokes so um, Merry Happy Whatever I think I could surprisingly recommend you know multicams aren't always everybody's thing so if you don't like those type of shows I totally get that you wouldn't get a lot of enjoyment out of this but this is just a nice little show about um about a couple who are dating that come home to visit the girlfriend's family and the craziness that ensues. It's a it's a crazy family that lives on the East Coast. The the father's very overbearing. You know, the siblings are all up in each other's businesses. They all have like their own wives and siblings that come over and it, it's just fun. You know, uh, if, if you if you it's been a while since you've watched a multicam, but also you want to get in the holiday spirit. Uh, happy Merry Whatever. I could recommend even with the caveat that it's been canceled it got canceled after one season last year but i think it still holds up i could easily watch this every year because as it like it has a pretty solid conclusion and they leave some things kind of open you know where you could take a second season but this surprisingly still stands on its own so merry happy whatever with a little bit of star power uh, from dennis quaid that probably got it greenlit to begin with so go there check that go. out on netflix and then a brand new season series uh that dropped this year is called dash and lily and this is based on a book i believe so i don't know if we'll be getting a second season or if this is considered a, a mini series but this is just a, a nice little kind of teenage rom-com about two characters meeting uh, uh, each other in New York over Christmas time you know if you like the if you like the vibes of you know New York in the winter you know and seeing things decorated and like teenagers doing teenage stuff you know this might be a fun little primer for the Christmas season we actually watched both of these before Thanksgiving kind of breaking my Thanksgiving rule but these kind of seemed like lower impact to me these aren't Christmas classics that I feel like had to be saved so maybe this will be our new Christmas tradition we kind of save these kind of lighter fair stuff for just before the holidays because you there is a little bit of um there's a little bit of a gap between um between once you watch plane trains and automobiles and between halloween and thanksgiving you have like a big gap there you don't have enough christmas you don't no. have enough thanksgiving movies to the fill thanksgiving up that time. movie well. <laughs> yes, exactly. So uh, I would expect that trend to continue where streaming services are going to be making more series slash mini series based around the holiday. That's kind of new and exciting, right? We haven't really seen that out there in, in the world yet. So uh, stay tuned. Uh, expect to see more. So to stay with the Netflix camp, a surprising movie that I talked about, I believe, last year on the podcast that came out in 2018, but it took me a year to watch it, was uh, The Christmas Chronicles, starring uh, Kurt Russell, who, as we know, is Ego from Guardians of the Galaxy Volume mm-hmm. 2, and many other things, but if we had to tie it into the podcast, that's how. Uh, I said last year, Christmas Chronicles was very surprising to me. It was very, very fun. Uh, um, Kurt Russell plays an amazing Santa. I love the two kids that go on the adventure with him, the uh, the sister the 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 girl that they cast is, is really really great and infectious uh, there's a whole lot of fun going going down 
You get to dive a little bit into some unique Christmas lore that they invent that's fun. There's a song and dance number inexplicably in a jailhouse in the in the third act of the film, um, which is just really, you know, really... That's how you know it's good <laughs> It's just really, really fun, and um, it was just a great time. So when I saw that they were making a sequel, Christmas Chronicles 2, oh, Chris, you knew I was going to be there right away. We rewatched Christmas Chronicles 1 um, on Thanksgiving, and then we ran right into Christmas Chronicles Chronicles 2, uh, you know, the very next day. And I will say Christmas Chronicles 2 keeps with the tradition of being a Christmas sequel that's definitely not as good as the first one, unfortunately. And I don't know exactly who's to blame. And I feel weird being harsh on like a kid's Christmas movie because that's where this one goes. The first Christmas Chronicles is very much like an all for the family movie. Everybody can have a good time. Everybody loves everybody loves Kurt Russell. The kids will have a good time seeing Santa Claus doing uh, magic stuff. There's reindeer flying. It's just a fun good time. The second one really feels like Tim Allen's The Santa Claus too. There's so much North Pole. There's so much new lore that's just like the. There's like gadgets and gizmos. Uh, there's like a villain which just seems odd for a Santa Claus movie and. I just didn't like it. It wasn't very fun. They added a new kid to the cast who I who I enjoyed. His character was kind of fun, but unfortunately, I wish Chris I could be recommending Christmas Chronicles too, but I don't think we're going to be going back and watching this one every year. But there's a really good chance that you might have a kid at the perfect age for the sequel and they might say they love the sequel better than the first one just because of all the new uh North Pole lore, I guess, if you're really looking for that. Oh, yeah. So, I, I, uh, need, I need my, my uh, Santa Claus connected universe to really. Yeah. But I going. can connect the second one really strongly to the podcast because uh, Fire Fist from Deadpool 2, also the, the young kid from Hunt for the Wilder People, is a uh, bear schnickel. I think is what he's called. If you remember that episode of The Office where Dwight is running around as Bear Schnickel, I think is what he calls himself. Uh, that kid ends up playing that character in this movie. So if you want to be a completionist of that kid's career, uh, you're going to have to watch this film. Uh, but also, Christopher Columbus took the reins of this film for the sequel, which I think actually, uh, Whisper, might be the downfall of it. Because Christopher Columbus only produced the first movie. Uh, mm-hmm. total, a totally different person directed the first movie. Uh, almost the same writers, but now Christopher Columbus directed the sequel and is also credited for being a, a co-writer for the film. So, unfortunately, I think this is kind of just dad stepping in, trying to take take over after the first one went really really well without much of his help and it, he just kind of made it worse so sorry Christopher Columbus but you've kind of lost some of my goodwill after those really bad Fantastic Beast movies but that's just me Christmas Chronicles 2 mm. unfortunate but we'll keep the Christmas train going for one more show over on Hulu you can watch the great American Bake Off Christmas edition. Boo. So <laughs> what the I know, one. I know exactly. The British one is, is just so much more charming because everything about it's British. You don't understand half the recipes uh, because, and everything just seems so much more magical. But I think I could actually surprisingly recommend the Christmas edition of the show because weirdly, Chris, I don't, I don't know if you, I don't know how well you're familiar with the Great American Bake Off, the normal edition. I'm not super familiar with it either, but I believe that one has Mary Berry as a judge. So when like the normal Bake Off a couple years ago split, they kept Paul Hollywood. Mary Berry came over to the United States, so she was judging the American version. And I don't know where Mary Berry went, but with this Christmas edition of the American version of Great British Bake Off, I know this is confusing. There's so many modifiers on this show. They are actually back in the UK and Paul Hollywood is a judge. It's so confusing. I can't explain it. So they're just like, okay, let's do an American version of the of the Great British Bake Off, right? Okay, but it's not going to be in America. We're going to put it at the tent that's in uh, that's in England, and then we're going to bring back Paul Hollywood because I'm sure the only reason he agreed to do it is because he didn't have to take a plane and fly over to America. Right. And then on top of that, like the judges are new. So like Baby Spice, I mean, the host, the Baby Spice is like one of the hosts. And this other football player who has like the nickname Spice 
is the host and i think that's supposed to vibe with like the spice of christmas or whatever and then there's like an american judge that i've seen on the food network before so this is just my long-winded way of saying the great american bake-off christmas edition is a lot closer to the great british bake-off than you think it's going to be right so if you're trying to if you're trying to get a little bit more bake-off if you're a if you're a completionist and after the finale aired on netflix for the mainline show on friday you can get more paul hollywood and more of the uk tent with american contestants on hulu there's two seasons and just to make things even more complicated chris which i'm sure they don't need to be the episodes i believe aired back to back so when you open them up you're just like oh that's weird there's only four episodes but the episodes are like an hour and a half long it's so weird i don't know how to explain it they're just back to back it's so strange but if you can get through all of that nonsense you can sit down. You can just kind of watch well, some fun bake off. So I've I've watched all these. You're you're, you're preaching to the choir, actually. Um, <laughs> so so Mary Bray did the first two seasons. Paul Hollywood came actually in in season three, um, and he's been doing it for three four years now. So, but is, is that just the Christmas version, or no, is he doing the, the reg- he's, he's doing judging. the regular show of the Great American Man, one as well? Did Mary Berry and, just like retire? I mean, she has all. I mean, she's old. I mean, yeah, she's it, great. Everybody loves her. Yeah, so it, she has every right to retire. She in wants, 2017, so. I think she retired. She's been. So, we we have her cookbook upstairs. Uh, I believe mm-hmm. uh, Rachel does. So I, I know that you know there are there are um, this, but like they are. Um, they. I mean, they, these are. You know, this is. It, it, it isn't very different, but I, I feel like. I don't like it as much as the originals. You know, it feels like a like a shoddy ripoff or like a <laughs> an off brand version. It just doesn't but even feel real. The, yeah, but it's strange because it's from the exact same production company. Yeah. It's just it's just an odd feeling. I, I compared yeah. it when I was talking to my wife about it. It feels like back when you were in high school, the first time you ever visited somebody else's high school. And it's just like, well, all of the stuff is here. I, there, there's hallways, there's desks, there's a cafeteria. Every, everyone's pretty much learning the same stuff, but it's not the high school I go to. You know, it's just yeah. all, all feels very weird. It, it, uh, it, it's kind of like, you know, that, that memes like, you know, I want the Great British Bake Off. Well, we have the Great British Bake Off at home. And like, this is the one that's at home. It's, it's not <laughs> quite bad, but it's like... This isn't what I asked for. But beggars can't be choosers. You're not yeah. going to be getting more Bake Off if you've already watched all of them until yeah. next year. Yeah, so exactly. if you want yeah, a little yeah. bit, if you want a little bit more, they're over on Hulu. So to mm. cap off the Corrin stream, which this might lead into some other news uh, later in the podcast, I finally finished the Clone Wars. Yes. I watched those must see episodes that Chris recommended. So I finally completed Ahsoka's Clone did, Wars arc. Um, did you feel? accomplished by watching those episodes and then jumping into the Mandalorian this week. I did. I did feel very accomplished and that was the goal. We knew Ahsoka was coming. Uh, There was lots of talk that it was going to be this week, but I don't know if it was ever confirmed at least a hundred percent on my end. So I was like, well, I better be safe than sorry. I finished it. And then right after I finished it, you know, since it deals a lot with order 66 there at the very end, I went and I rolled right into uh, revenge of the Sith, which is a shock. It's, it's, it's like getting whiplash because the animated TV show moves the camera so much more. There's so more, so much more depth to Anakin and all the other characters. And then going into George Lucas's live action version, it almost it's just like, it's so jarring. It's like the camera's on a tripod the entire time. Nothing's ever moving. Everybody's talking like nobody cares about anything that's happening. Mm. And it was well, just, it's just bizarre. The characters <laughs> feel so flat. In, in the movies oh. compared to the dynamicness they had in those shows. Oh, yeah. I mean, like, through the Clone Wars, they're just trying to figure out who is this evil Sith Lord that or that they've been battling. You know, who's been controlling these droids? Who have they been fighting across the galaxy all this time? And then in Revenge of the Sith, Anakin finally tells Mace Windu, oh, my God, the Chancellor. He's the guy, our boss. He's the guy that we've been waging war against this whole time. And Mace Windu's just like, oh, Okay, just everyone's just so muted. So that was a bizarre experience. Uh, so I, I I don't know what to say after that. But I did roll and I watched one or two episodes of Ahsoka and Rebels. Uh, I just looked up the Ahsoka episodes. I'm not about to watch all the Rebels. That just feels like a lot of work. Um, it's, but it's, I watched the. It's pretty. It's pretty palatable. It's actually yeah, pretty, but, pretty short. Yeah, I watched a couple of Ahsoka episodes. Uh, they haven't really dived deep into it yet. But I guess later towards the end, there's there's might be some more relevant stuff yes. because some people are. trying 
trying to square the Rebels timeline with the Mandalorian timeline now. And I guess uh, Filoni is a, of a Lord of the Rings fan because Ahsoka turns to Ahsoka the White or whatever uh, towards the end of Rebels. So I don't really know what's happening there. I know Thra- Thrawn. That's how you say his name. Yeah, right? yeah, Thrawn, yeah, the blue guy. I believe he's involved in Rebels, and he yeah. might be name dropped in something else we're about to talk about. Uh, so yeah, the Rebels has just become more important than it's ever been before in its life. Uh, so we'll, well see how that goes. Well, but... thankfully, it's like three seasons, and like that's like a day's worth of binge. Thankfully, like it's not. It, it's actually yeah. light. I just it's it's different than Clone Wars, and you gotta be ready for that jump because you're like, yeah. this isn't Clone Wars. Yeah, and I was actually surprised to see how many episodes Ahsoka is in. Yeah. Like, I mean, I didn't do I didn't do the math, but she, I would say she's at least in at least mentioned or appears in at least a quarter of all of Rebels, which no. uh, was more than I thought it was going to be. Um, there's actually a lot of Clone Wars episodes that she's straight up just not in, so mm-hmm. that's kind of familiar if you're a Clone Wars watcher. But there you go, that's the Corrin stream <laughs> finally wrapped up. We finished the Corrin feast at the top of the show. We have introduced everything. So man. Now we can finally get into the news and everything just aligned very, very well here because it is very much a holiday week. We don't actually have a whole lot of news, right. so I, I think this might be a nice rounded episode yeah. with all of the things that we're talking about. Short week, short news, but that doesn't mean it's not as important. And the first thing mm-hmm. we're going to talk about is we got to watch Tenant this week. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we we did do a review episode, so you can catch it if you have watched it while well, it was in theaters or if you're going to watch it digital coming up, catch it later. It's a whole separate episode. We're not going to tell you anything about it here. Uh, but we'll just give you some impressions what we what we got out of it and you mm-hmm. know our initial reactions and uh, I'm just gonna kind of jump into it because we, we have like a what hour long version over there <laughs> that we talked about it um I went in completely blind to this movie and uh, at the end of the day I think um, Christopher Nolan is a master at making cinema and making film and bringing the best out of some actors um, for it but this story is gonna give you some head scratches at some times uh and that's no that's not a bad thing i uh, like i said this movie i'd highly recommend to somebody but like some films uh not unlike new mutants you could be on your phone watching new mutants i do not recommend you being on your phone watching tenant because you will have you'll be more upset at the end of it than if you did while you watch <laughs> it so uh pay attention to it look at the craft look at the production listen to the sounds you're gonna love it but do not be distracted while you watch it because you will regret it by the end of the film. Mike, your take. Yeah, uh, no spoilers, of course. Uh, I kind of rank my experience watching Marvel movies kind of based on tiers. You know, I have like A tier, B tier, C tier. Uh, I think this uh, this holds pretty solid as like a Nolan B tier movie. Um, not necessarily a bad thing. A Nolan B tier movie is usually uh, a lot better than a lot of movies out there already. And it's 2020, so beggars can't really be choosers with what you get to watch. So I was just happy I was able to sit down and watch a big blockbuster movie with a uh, multiple action set pieces um it has a a james bond vibe running through the whole thing which is pretty fun there's heist segments there's car chase segments so uh you know overall i did have a good time but also uh i thought maybe some of the character motivations were a little weak you know there's a lot at stake in this film and some interesting decisions are made based on what could possibly happen if things go totally bad uh i would love to know a little bit more about our protagonist uh, but it doesn't get fleshed out as much as i would like it because i'd like to connect with him a little bit more and then also <laughs> as i say this at the top of, of of the spoiler cast but the movie makes me feel a little stupid and i don't know if that's a good thing thing or a bad thing i feel like those poor souls that didn't understand inception when it came out back in the day but i did understand inception so i was never in that in in that camp but now i feel like i'm struggling with kind Mm. of understanding some of the finer points that happened in this movie but i don't think that's necessarily on me i think this one might be a little over complex um and i think that's kind of detrimental to the overall story of the film but Uh, I mean, Nolan has a very, very hot fan base out there um, that I'm sure has delved into this movie left and right. I'm actually looking forward to watching some like explainers up on YouTube that maybe can flesh out the story a little bit more for me. there's a bit of a um, there's a bit of a MacGuffin, much like some superhero movies uh, do in this film that you know I wished was a little bit stronger. But some of the filmmaking is pretty cool. You can definitely tell there's craft 
all over this film that I can appreciate, but uh, I'm glad I didn't risk my life to go see the movie. That's a whole nother story of Tenet was its release. But also, I think I would have gotten a little bit more out of this film if I was able to see it in the theater, which is a little unfortunate. But uh, this film begs you to watch it twice, so I'm sure it will be re-released in theaters at some point in time, and I, I think I'd be happy to go see it again to get the theater-going experience. But yeah, that's Tenet. I think I could recommend it, maybe, but maybe not the best movie he's ever made. Yeah, I mean, there's there's... There will be, like I said, I think there will be fans of this. There will be fans of the other ones, but everyone's not wrong. It's still a good movie. It's just you, you're gonna be like, well, maybe don't don't look too closely. Don't don't just look at the big picture. You'll be fine. You'll be fine that way. So uh, you can also head over listen to our review uh, if you want to listen to the full breakdown with spoilers and stuff like that. Great, great characters, though. Great actors. So we love that. Uh, sad news on the Star Wars front, Mike. I know we were going to talk about it a little bit, but uh, David Prowse, the actor who was in the Darth Vader suit for the original trilogy of films, uh, passed away this weekend. Uh, there's, uh, if you ever watch any documentaries, he's a he's a British guy, um, David Prowse, a bodybuilder. That's why he's so tall and big. Um, he had a very British accent, and they actually he did all his lines under the helmet. So mm-hmm. if you could actually, because he, he thought he was going to use his voice, they he thought his voice was going to be used for Darth Vader. So if you go back and listen to those uh, behind the scenes stuff uh, before they put James Earl Jones on, you can actually hear what he sounds like in those, and it's very contrasting to Darth Vader. Yeah, uh, I do. It's a yeah, because the pitch is definitely different. James Earl Jones is such a low tone voice. Uh, yeah, yeah it's, a, it's a little, it's a little uh, jarring. Yeah, but I recommend. It's still fun to go see it. It's, it's sad. It, uh, we we've lost him. Uh, one of the, one of the big actors in the films, and you know, still played that role. Um, with, Unfortunately. With, with that. Yeah, I mean, I mean, unfortunately, we're only going to be getting more news like this. You know, last year we lost up uh, Peter Mayhew, who was uh, famous for portraying Chewbacca. You know, so I mean, the Star Wars movies—they're just straight up old. I mean, uh, no matter what way you look at it, it's mm. really unfortunate. So, um, yeah, it's sad to see him go. I mean, man, it's just a big moment, right? I remember when I was a kid, and I remember seeing that mask come up for the first time, right? And you see the face of that, Darth that's, Vader. That's not him. No, that's not him. No, no, no. That, he he played everything. But the like the the, oh. the face and the, and the actual voice that so he he's just the body of of the uh, wow my, well my emotional connection is now totally yeah, different yep uh, but uh, I, I it's still the sentiment still remains yeah. the same the movie is old well uh, we will be losing unfortunately more obviously Carrie Fisher I mean I didn't really need to say yeah. that one but yeah I, I think it's it's interesting when um you know I always think of Darth Vader the first time he walks into the rebel ship right and he has to, like duck through that and he just carries that if authority and that importance before you even hear him you're like that's the bad guy uh, that's the guy we're going to be you know dealing with and he's just so big compared to everybody else that i it was just interesting to see who, who was under that at the, at the end of the day so um yeah for sure on the other front uh this is gonna we're gonna dive in this is gonna be if you've not watched the mandalorian right this is spoiler territory we don't normally break this down but this is news. Uh, this is yeah. Star Wars news. This affects- yeah, we said yeah we said at the top of the season that if w- whenever we were get, gonna get like a really big episode, we were definitely gonna stop and talk about it. So uh, this is much like Mandalorian season one, episode one. If you haven't been spoiled by it already, I mean, uh, what have you been doing? I guess yeah. maybe you ate a lot of turkey and you slept all weekend. But yep. yeah, we're about to spoil the hell out of episode five of season two. Use time codes to jump ahead if you want. Uh, that's why we put them in here. Um, but uh, episode five of The Mandalorian, like I said last week, is called The Jedi and gives us our first live action look at Ahsoka Tano, played by Rosario yeah. Dawson. And I will tell you, this episode does not hold back. They drop us right in with her, right? Like, it wasn't the end of the episode reveal. It was mm-hmm. the beginning of the episode reveal. Yeah, she's and, right there at the beginning. <laughs> and directed by Dave Filoni. Uh, it was definitely a fun fun episode but uh what i think the big thing here mike is the not just the ahsoka reveal right like how could that be how you like how could that be eclipsed by <laughs> yeah, something else that would have been enough like feloni <laughs> that would have been enough i would have been happy but you just you i feel like he put like a whole seasons of info a season of information in this yeah, one episode he did he gave it to us at the right time so uh the child who we lovingly have referred to as baby yoda for the past year mm. has been given his official name grogu 
Grogu. I actually like it. Once I heard the name, I knew some people probably weren't going to like it. I mean, how is it ever going to live up to the cuteness that is Baby Yoda? But like, just if you just think of the name Grogu, that's like a that's like a perfect Star Wars name. I mean, that's exactly how everything in this galaxy is named to begin with. It's always just kind of weird. Kind of sounds like something that you might eat or maybe a cleaning product that you might use. Yeah. Kind of sounds like Goku. I kept calling him Goku for a little bit, and it's just like even when you even when you uh, Google search Grogu, or I don't remember where I was, uh, what exactly I was searching, but it said, did you mean Goku? And I was like, no, I meant Grogu. I mean, this dude is, he's popping right now. He should be trending everywhere. Um, I actually, I like the name. I think it's, I think it's like so cute when, uh, when Pedro Pascal says his name and he just like looks up, it's like, oh yeah, I finally figured out the name of this dog I adopted from the pound. Yeah. And, and it's, it fits in line with the, like the Yoda uh, naming convention, like uh, two syllable, very, very like, mm-hmm. Um, in ins and vowels. So yeah, um, Ahsoka tells him that his name is Grogu. He was actually at the Jedi Temple years ago uh, oh, during uh, before Mike's Revenge of the Sith. So uh, <laughs> probably go back and watch some of those. Maybe he maybe he's in some of those Clone Wars episodes. <laughs> I saw I saw a, a funny Photoshop that you know has that iconic shot where uh, Anakin, Anakin yeah. has the lightsaber out and the little kids like, oh, and then they put Grogu behind a chair in the background. I was like, oh my gosh, he was there the whole time. Yeah, because he's technically I mean he is a child, but he's like fifty years old or something like that, right? Um, they said in last season. So mm-hmm. um, so he's got a background of that, which is crazy. He knows his name. He he turns his head like a little dog whenever he says his name, Mm. which is fun. Um, But Ahsoka also said he could not be trained as he's too attached, uh, like, uh, too to the Mandalorian, much like, yeah. you know, Anakin was. In- and not just too attached. He has a very, very dark past. Uh, and, and I think what they're alluding to is the scientific experiments mm-hmm. that I, it seems like they were done on him because in the previous episode, they find that Imperial base What that, I don't know if they were doing cloning or they're if they were doing super soldier it, project. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. That's what it seemed like. Cause there was that one shot where they had all of those, um, all of that like special stormtrooper armor that was black. I didn't really get a good look at it. I don't yeah. know exactly they're what like it looked de- they're like. They're like super death troopers is what it looked like. Yeah, it seems like the the Empire is trying to make their maybe own force using people possibly and maybe they got to get that blood from Grogu but mm-hmm. it seems like Grogu at some point in time was in a cage and was getting poked and prodded and that just makes me want to cry yeah. because I can't imagine that that, that our poor son uh, getting hurt any more than he has been. Yeah. Um, so that I mean well, that was big news too, and and that's like I think Ahsoka was also hinting at she's worried she's worried yeah. what happens as cute as Grogu is he has all of this tumultuous uh, darkness in his past and she doesn't want to make another Anakin and she has a very 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 close uh, relationship with what happens uh, when uh, somebody who shouldn't have the Force wields it right. so there, there's a lot going on here now I was gonna I was gonna ask you this Chris more as people out there in the audience who hasn't had the time to watch all of Clone Wars maybe haven't had the time to go on YouTube to look up all of the Ahsoka explainer ex, Ahsoka explainers that are out there on the internet I mean geez just search the word Ahsoka you're gonna find 30 explainers that tell you everything you need to know about her but if if somebody who's not familiar with her Chris wanted the quick cliff note Notes. Yeah. Who is Ahsoka Tano? Ahsoka Tano is the, I believe, first and only Padawan of Anakin Skywalker uh, in his time in the Jedi Academy, if you will. Mm-hmm. Uh, he got her as a Padawan before he was a Jedi Knight because he didn't become a Jedi Knight until the Clone Wars, I believe, or the Revenge of the Sith. I believe. Yeah, till the ch- till the Chancellor put him in the into the uh, Jedi Council. Yes, so uh, so he was like, a, I guess a. Not a Jedi Knight, but I guess like a still a student really of the Jedi, and he was able Mm -hmm. to give him a Padawan, and so he had to train her and then work with her. He didn't really want her to begin with, so he had to you know found out you know she's kind of got this personality. She she was snip. She was snippy. Yeah. So she's called snips. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So she's so but she went on to become you know a a force of of good in the Jedi, and then later on, um, spoilers for the Clone Wars, um, she's accused of killing some Jedi. uh, more more Jedi, but come to find out, she was being blackmailed by another Jedi person, and you know, even though she tried to tell everyone she wasn't doing it, no one believed her. So when they were like, "Okay, well, you've been cleared of your crimes, we want you to back in," she's like, "I don't want to be a part of this, you know, kind of hypocrisy thing." So she left the Jedi Order in season um five of of the Clone Wars, which is why she's not in like any of season six at all, and most mm-hmm. of seven. So she is technically not a Jedi, but she was trained in the Jedi ways, which is why she has the white. 
lightsabers. Um, she doesn't belong to the, the colors come from the crystals of uh, yeah people who who went to the Jedi um, yeah planet. She kind of considers herself almost like independent from the. She's like a she's a force she, user. Like, yeah, she's like a she's like a, a a Jewish person that's culturally Jewish, but is not religiously Jewish. If yeah. that's one way that you could describe it, and I'm not Jewish at all, so I'm sorry if I I uh, butchered that. But I yeah. feel like I do know I do have some friends that are yeah. like that. Uh, but yeah, and then she continues on into Rebels, and there's some stuff that happens there. Yeah. But I feel like that's keying in a lot more to what's happening in the Mandalorian right now, timeline wise, yeah. because I didn't look up any timelines, but Rebels happens, I believe, takes place. After the second Death Star has exploded, no. so nope, it hasn't. No, no, Is Rebel, Rebels takes first? place before A New Hope. Oh, it does. Okay, yeah. so Rebels takes place. Okay, and then Mando is happening after after, the Death Star after Revenge. Uh, yeah, Return of the Jedi. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So there, there is, there's like a, what, what's I guess 10, 15 years in that range. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I guess between that, uh, because Rebels, uh, you know, Ahsoka is essentially an underground. Um, resistance person at that point um and she is uh fighting essentially her her nemesis is grand admiral thrawn who used to be a legacy character who is now brought into canon as this military strategist who they use him in rebels as, as an actor uh, or as a character so um they name drop him literally at the end of this episode as well showing that he is back in the picture because he was sent to the outer realm at the end of that no one knew where he was so he, apparently he's made his way back into the Star Wars universe uh, after like 15 years or so. Um, yeah, and it really, it, it makes you wonder what happened. Cause if he's like this big Imperial baddie, you know, he obviously does not pop up in the new trilogy at all. Mm-hmm. You know, he doesn't seem to reconnect with the uh, emperor in, in any way that we can see. So at some point during the Mandalorian, are we going to see Thrawn? Is he going to be it, dethroned? You know, is Ahsoka going to be the well, one that attacks him? Is there going to be an Ahsoka spinoff that one, possibly? Yes. That's like, that's the <laughs> question. Like, you know, we have Bo-Katan and, uh, and Ahsoka Tano now, right? who are both mm-hmm. in the Clone Wars and 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 I believe Rebels. Uh, I think Sabine Wren is in Rebels more, so we might see her. But, like, uh, could that be a spinoff where they go fight this, you know, offshoot of the Empire who's trying to, to you know, rebuild it after the Empire, Emperor's quote-unquote been killed? Yeah, um, I mean, it's a big casting, right? We, we've known this ahead of time that Rosario Dawson was going to be Ahsoka Tano, and that's a pretty big pull. I mean, she's definitely got the nerd cred out there, you know, for being in Daredevil daredevil she's been in a lot of indie stuff like kirk's clerks and she's been in other mainstream stuff so she's a known commodity so i think they did an amazing job yeah. casting her she looks just like ahsoka um i had mixed feelings on the the headpiece that they gave her mm. i think it was a smart idea to go practical for the most part for it but i i feel like the creases and kind of her head tentacle had me mix both ways because in the Clone Wars animated show, I mean, they, there is a crease there, right? This mm. is like a type of flesh or material, almost. I don't know, like it's part I keep of the body, maybe, really. Yeah, I keep thinking like maybe like elephant trunk or something like that. Like there would be folds and creases in it, right? Because that's just how the skin, how skin and flesh works. But I felt like I was seeing more of the material and not so much of the flesh in the headpiece. So that was a little distracting for me. But everything outside of that, you know, was great. Um, a lightsaber was like good. I loved the yeah, light they gave off. Yeah, I was trying to keep. Was one a little bit shorter than the other? Like yes, how she, she had she it. Has, okay. I think they're called like Shoto lightsabers. Um, her fighting style. She used to only fight underhanded lightsabers, right? Um, yeah, I thought that was cool in that final yeah. fight when she loses one lightsaber and then she turns it around. It's like, oh shit, she's going back to her. Room. Roots. Yeah, I thought it was cool to find out Best Car Steel does deflect lightsabers. Um, mm-hmm. We we know it deflected bolts, but like you know, after she goes in on the Mandalorian, he's able to like block her with his his Best Car Steel pieces, which was really cool mm-hmm. um, for that. And also, I just want to point out before I forget, she does not name drop the planet Tython where um, the Mandalorians to take Grogu. Uh, Tython is the home planet of the Jedi. That is the original planet where the quote unquote religion of the Jedi started. Um, yeah, and th- and and that's kind of like where we we left off. Like they, he is to be uh, Grogu is to be placed on top of like a hill where I'm sure he can do some sort of like internal spirit quest and then hopefully reach out and connect think, to another Jedi. You think it'll be Yoda? You think they'll 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 bring in Yoda for that one? Um 
like ghost. I mean, like, he, he, he would have to be forced. Go- yeah, sorry, I I just have to yeah. keep going through the timeline in my head because there's just so many Star Wars uh, properties that I've been engaging in. Yeah. But I, I mean, yeah, that could be really cool, right? Um, I think the uh, the only other downside that maybe I could uh, levy on the Mandalorian at the moment is since at the since it's a very episodic nature, he does just seem to be jumping. Uh, to the next thing he just gets his next mission and he goes forward and he does it you know i i feel like at some point in time uh you know the mandalorian you know the character inside pedro pascal the human would just be like all right enough is enough will somebody just give me like a straight answer right you know because he thought he thought ahsoka was going to be the end of his journey he was ready to say goodbye uh to grogu and hand him over to this jedi but ahsoka says oh i can't train him one because he might have too much darkness in him and we don't want another darth vader on our hand he'd be such a cute little darth vader though he'd be so yeah. tiny in his little outfit it'd be so cute he'd be such a cute little sith um so she doesn't want to train him because of that but also because his connection to uh, Mando with the idea of maybe once he gets a little bit older and he maybe learns how to communicate with his big boy words, maybe he'll be able to do some normal training. But to me, it seems like story-wise, what's the point if he finds another Jedi, right? Hopefully, wouldn't the other Jedi also have the same responsible opinion that Ahsoka has, right? Of like, oh, maybe wait till this guy gets a little bit older, well, see how the darkness kind of inside of him develops. I, I, what, what I almost expected, obviously, I don't think this works for a series that needs to continue on and play more stories, but I thought the most logical thing for Ahsoka to say is, why don't you keep him? You train them, you kind of teach them, grow them up, teach them how to be a nice, respectable citizen. And then maybe in like, you know, I don't know, maybe it doesn't take another 50 years until he kind of grows up a little bit more. You know, maybe when you're an old man, maybe he'll finally be able and, to do some teaching. But that's not as exciting. But you know? that's that's why Dave Filoni's in charge of this, because that's not how Jedi work. That's you don't grow them up and then train them. Right. He's already been trained a little bit. Like, so that would break all of the Jedi, you know, code down and probably cause an even more darker side to him to arise if something happened. Seems to, like he to, needs to go to a Jedi therapist. But, like, but somebody I, needs to commune with him and be like, okay, wh- how, tell me about your feelings. Well, uh, like, uh, what what have you gone through? Well, but here's the thing. I think I think what they're doing here with Soka isn't giving us, like, oh, another physical... Like, he's going to assume another physical Jedi is going to come and talk to them, right? That's, mm-hmm. that's why I think it's going to be, like, a Force Ghost scene of characters and they they probably have filmed these in secret and we don't know about them yet like but who maybe better quite who, maybe Qui-Gon comes back yeah, that'd no, be kind of cool too he, we haven't seen that good dude in a bit he's not coming back uh <laughs> what's his name what's his name uh, the actor Liam, said he Liam coming, Neeson yeah he's not coming back to that um but like who better to tell the species Grogu of his species and his background and his heritage than like a force ghost Yoda voiced by again um uh who voices Yoda uh, whatever his name is he does Grover. He was in Knives Out, actually. It's like the the therapist. Um, but he, like that actor, you know, doing the voice, like bringing that back in time then. But like filming that completely in secret, not telling us yet would be amazing. I mean, um, that would be a big, uh, that would be, yeah. I feel like that would be so big you'd need to save it for the season finale. Yeah. Oh, well, um, I mean, we also thought this would be as well. Like they just keep bringing these in. I think there's, there's mm-hmm. going to be some reveal uh, that we just don't know yet. But also at the same time, we also got to think, you know, the, um, Moff Gideon is the villain and you know he, they're yeah. still running from him yeah so. and they have a secret tracker on his uh, on the ship right now yeah. so they know exactly so, where he is now I, I would think almost w- where the story might go is somebody is going to tell Mando uh, after maybe communicating with um uh, with Grogu or you know something along those lines of just like this little guy needs closure he's got to get over his dark past before he can move on to be a Jedi master so you're going to need to help him get closure mm-hmm. so you're going to need to find the people that experimented on him you're going to need to shut this down you know maybe maybe super soldiers exist already maybe there's some out there and they have a little bit of Grogu in them and he feels like split he feels fractured you need to go and you need to remedy this so he can feel like whole again and then he can move on with his life so that's my guess of where the story might be going but I never expected all this shit to happen in episode 5 so I mean I like that I'm watching something that I can't guess what's going to happen and it, it ties it into all the other Filoni stuff very easily it didn't feel forced it was a it was a a an information dump but it felt natural mm. and and dave filoni again like i said should be the the herald of star wars going for like he is he is it he is doing everything right He's and doing a great it, job and it's proving it every week that's which is which is awesome so um that's great i also want to you know, give a shout out to um 
Jeans guy, if, if no one heard about Jeans guy last week, there's a shot where Mandalorian, uh, what's her name, Cara Dune and um, Grief Karga are all firing, right? And there's some guy, like, it looks like a set guy in jeans in the background <laughs> who just wasn't, he, like, he's standing there in jeans up against the wall. And, space like, jeans. Yeah. Well, they, apparently <laughs> they, they don't have jeans in space. That was why it's a big deal. This whole Star Wars <laughs> jeans thing. So uh, he was a meme. I saw someone like do a cosplay as him already. Like it, it, it went on, it went down a wild rabbit hole. But they've already edited him out before the next oh, episode damn. He came in. So. <laughs> if you want to go watch Mandalorian jeans guy, you got to get it um, on YouTube Pirate or something. It. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I thought that was fun. But yeah, Star Wars knocking it out of the park, Mike. I think I think that was a. Uh, that was a Thanksgiving gift we didn't know we were going to get. Yeah. And three episodes left, right? Just three more weeks? I believe so, yes. If that's five, I think there's eight. So, um, mm-hmm. yeah. Really, really excited to, to see where this goes. On the flip side of that coin, uh, right after that in January, we get the uh, WandaVision uh, show on Disney+. Plus. And mm-hmm. uh, I know you mentioned earlier about multicams. They did film this in front of a live studio audience. Man, how did they keep those people quiet, but, right? I feel like either that episode maybe doesn't have a huge reveal in it, or they just followed these people, you know, like if you say anything on the internet to anybody, we will know exactly who it was, you know, but also we watched the finale of uh, the Great British Bake Off this week and they couldn't bring in uh, people due to yeah. COVID and it was just the staff. Maybe they did the same thing for WandaVision, just like, hey, crew, anybody that's not working right now, just come sit in this audience and just react. Yeah, well, they actually did. It was actually a real audience, uh, and they brought them in, and they are very, uh, from entertainment, like, very, very strict NDAs. Um, and <laughs> yeah. even even apparently the crew was wearing period-specific clothing while on set. Oh, wow. Um, and, uh, like, used lenses from that era to make it feel like it was actually filmed in that, that era. So, hmm. um I don't again. I don't know if it was multicam, but I know they went all out. And um, I, I again, I've talked to someone who's worked on this show and can confirm all of this is in fact true, other than just Entertainment Weekly report. So uh, that's that's what I don't know if they'll have the canned laughter or anything like that. I assume they will, um, because that's part of a uh, those sitcoms that they're going to be going through, right? Mm-hmm. So uh, I'm excited to watch this. I want to see more. Give us another trailer. Uh, I think that's going to be our Christmas present from Marvel. Oh, please, please, please. Uh, because that's going to come up around the corner. So WandaVision, knock on wood, we'll be talking about it a lot next year. Hawkeye filming in New York this week, Mike. I don't know you know that, up in Brooklyn. You been yeah, there? Yeah, I mean, if this is uh, if this is uh, Matt Fraction inspired, he's got to be in a loft somewhere, right? <laughs> yeah. So uh, In a brick loft building. <laughs> so so uh, um, Jeremy Renner posted this, what's this on Instagram, I believe, last earlier last week. Um in his Hawkeye makeup with his broken nose and, and bandages. And this is fully right out of Matt Fraction's My Life is oh, yeah. Run. I mean, yeah, just look at that little kind of square bandage right over his eye. I mean, like that little that little bandage is drawn all over the character's face, all over the F- Matt yeah. Fraction run. Yeah, and I believe he doesn't look like he has his mohawk as much. Um, maybe a little bit of a remnant, um, but I don't know. Maybe this takes place right after the unsnapping, if you will. Yeah, so. maybe. Um, I, I'm excited for this. I think if they can pull off the the humor and personality they got in that, this could be a really, yeah. really, really good show. Yeah, it seems like he's going to be his character is going to be ready for retirement, right? I mean, how many times could this guy possibly risk his life and then lose his family and have his family come back? I think it's time for him to retire, stay at the farm, look after my family. Yeah. You know, no more of this craziness. I feel like it's going to be one of those endings where, like, he appears to be dead and then they just faked his death so he can go live with his family kind of thing yeah, maybe so they can bring nick him back fury. if nick, they want to nick fury saw he's like i want the nick fury package disappear yeah. me please <laughs> yeah. send me to space um which the nick fury show i hope we have more news on that next week i've been hearing some stuff in the background mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. new mutants is topping the video on demand charts this week it's uh been the number one sh- uh movie people purchased the past uh okay. past week so I, I mean we didn't necessarily crap all over the movie but this is probably the only uh, top of the well, charts that this movie's ever going to get. <laughs> so lack lack of choice may be part of it. Um, Jiu Jitsu is <laughs> yeah. on that list, but it's like eighth on that list. <laughs> I forgot to tell you last week. Uh, they, you know, the sound whoosh, 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 like uh-huh. when people are. They added every that sound to every person's movement in the movie. <laughs> you will get over whoosh, 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 so fast in that thing. Is why. Wait, are you saying you got? Whoosh, Lash? Yeah, I, I exactly. <laughs> uh, it was it was crazy. I just turned it on for ten minutes for me, Mike. <laughs> I want to see what you think in ten minutes of of what you think. But like, 
Um, New Mutants again. The, Mulan is on this list as well in the top five. New Mutants. These. I mean, New Mutants is the newest one. Mulan's been on there a minute, but like, you know, these movies. You know, people were worried that like, you're not going to make any money. Um, you know, if they go to video on demand and purchasing first, well, they are obviously. Uh, they're not maybe making all the money back, but people are buying them. We just don't assume what the average consumer is going to go buy. Um, but that's good to see people are you know, buying these movies, these new releases on these you know, uh, purchasing services. So going forward, good for them. Uh, Mike, <laughs> last week I beat miles Morales before we recorded this week. You had a chance to beat miles Morales. I did. Uh, we both played it on the PlayStation four. Uh, we did not have the PlayStation five. Uh, and, um, I, I think I, again, we kind of talked about you. We talked about the time frame of this right mm-hmm. last week. And did you, did you do your math? You were going to do how long it takes oh. you to beat this game? <laughs> no, actually I didn't do my math. Oh, uh, but because I, I like you know, so let's talk about yeah. let's talk about this game a little. Let's review it a little bit. Uh, at the our initial impressions, I, I was very plussed because this is everything that you loved about the first Spider-Man game in 2018, just with a little bit extra, right? You get these added Venom powers. I would say the skill trees maybe get a little bit more simplified, yeah. Um, which I think is a little bit easier to handle actually, because you have to. There's a learning curve for this game for sure. Either versions of it, because you got to understand all the mechanisms. Before where you can really be the true uh, hero that Spider-Man has, because he's got a lot of he's got a lot of moves in his, ar- in his arsenal, and it takes a little bit of wa- takes a little while to learn. So, uh, yeah, the early reviews were great. I would say my review held pretty strong to that. I still had a great time. This felt like the most premium, cream of the crop history making DLC I've yeah. ever played right because we're in the exact same map things are tweaked a little bit oh, we got a new character but we're all still using the same engine and a lot of the same moves but you know you just get more fun on top of that so uh, now that being said I feel like all of my opinions on this game run through the filter of the $50 price tag mm-hmm. because with the $50 price tag the developers are signaling to you that this is not a full fledged game right if it was we'd be charging you 60 or maybe even possibly 70 you know if this was truly a next gen game that's how much we'd be charging you so we're letting you know hey drop your expectations that this isn't a full-fledged game but it is a new adventure so i'm playing this game and i know that in the back of my head but at some point in times when i feel like i wasn't having the most fun i would think would I be okay with this if maybe it was a $40 game or maybe if it was a $30 game that might be stretching it a little bit, but I feel like that's kind of where my brain goes. Right. Um, I I don't think we need to spoil this game just because, you know, some people might be getting it for the holidays, but I think we can kind of do some light, you know, touches on the story of where much like my biggest complaint of the Avengers game earlier this year, big lack of villains, Uh you know, you do get some mile, you get, do get some miles centric characters characters from the comics showing up in this story but like man you get all of the cream of the crop spider-man villains popping up in that 2018 game and really you only get one returning and they return Two. kind of twice well one's kind of a hologram right well right? Is that i'm the not one gonna that say that, yeah, yeah they're they're two villains who use this pretty much the same kind of fight styles from uh the, the, yeah. the, the previous Spider-Man. So I was kind of hoping maybe some more exciting boss fights because I, this isn't a spoiler at all because it's in the it's in the trailer. But the main villain is the Tinkerer, mm. and I don't know. Maybe this is just my personal preference, but I just feel like kind of tech tech based villains are never as threatening as I feel like they are. Right? You know, whenever you're watching a superhero TV show or maybe reading a comic book, like the tech based villain is always somebody that really doesn't create that big of a problem you know they're usually dispatched in like one or two issues or they only last for one episode they don't really have an arc so the fact that the tinkerer was the big baddie i never really felt too threatened throughout the whole game by them um but you know that's just kind of more like a story based decisions i i absolutely loved all the mechanics of this game i think the venom powers i don't want to i don't want to leave them you know when we get the next mainline peter parker game how are they going to fill that gap because those are the most comparable to this individual kind of suit finishers that i believe that's what happened in the 2018 game right like i remember there's like there's like a spider-man costume with like a guitar and he does like a big strum right and it's like a big blast around it yeah. I, I think that's kind of what the Venom Blasts are replacing in this game. 
But I remember those not being super effective. And I think I opted for the ability of just doing two finishers in a row just to yeah. negate all of the suit effects because I was like, well, they don't really do that much. So I love the Venom based skill tree. I love all those skills. And plus, you get camo, you get to go invisible, yeah. which they do a good job balancing the game because I feel like that almost would make the game too easy if you could do that in the first game. But they do a really good job balancing. So Overall, super great. I had a fun time playing the game, but you know, may, I know some people were, were maybe a little bit more disappointed than me. And I think honestly, that just comes down to the price point. You know, well, how how cheap does this game have to be to to justify maybe the lack of some features? Uh, but at the same time, you get to you get to build on top of all the stuff that they built on the 2018 game. So yeah, there's just kind of like a weird math equation in my it, head as I'm playing this game. But luckily, it does not distract too much well i think to me this is a nice bridge game between this one and the next one right because you know you do get miles as background in that game you don't have to play this game to get miles background you, you get it and in also the other one you kind of have to play this game or at least go on youtube there is an after credit scene that does kind of connect you yeah. to the next game which i was not expecting and i was pleasantly surprised to see that yeah and, and it's great it, it builds miles up so when miles is in your next game spider-man 2 as we, mm. we talked about, like, what we would like to see is a two-player game, right? Where you get to play Ooh. one person's Peter, oh, one person's Miles, and you're so seeking much it fun. up. Uh, mm. Or going across... The, imagine going across the whole city to do defuse two bombs or whatever the missions mm. are. Uh, but I, this character builds him up as his own. I think I like he has his own unique swinging style. Um, mm -hmm. You get to, you know, I think flying through the city with him feels different than Peter. Uh, easily, easily said. I, I like some of his suits. I think his suit's got a little more love because Spider-Man has a history of mm -hmm. suits. Miles doesn't, so they were able to make some really cool ones off the fly. Uh, I, I really enjoyed the characters. I, I The biggest thing is, and this isn't a spoiler either, like they use, instead of um, Peter Parker, he's swinging around trying to find crime in the city, they use mm -hmm. the crime app in this one, um, which is a that feature. Genki that Genki makes. Yeah, yeah, which is cool because then you can go do those crimes to get those trophies or points that you need rather than trying to figure out Hey, where do I find these? Like, I just got to swing around for 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I really think this, uh, no, no spoilers, the story has a lot of heart. A lot of heart. Oh, yeah, uh, for it's, sure. It's very, very touching. Um, I did the math, actually. So, um, for you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. So, so Miles takes about 12 hours to complete. Uh, if you okay. Just, if you kind of go through it at normal pace. Regular Spider Man takes about 20 hours to complete. Okay. Um, which would make it a less game, but I'm going to go ahead and dump on this. The DLC for Spider-Man that's like 25 bucks normally mm -hmm. is the same length. It's about 12 hours as this. So really, it should have probably been in that 40 range um, to to show the length wise. Uh -huh. But at the same time, you know, it did feel like a new town. It felt like good. It didn't really change a whole lot about the map. Uh, really, it's just the snow effects and stuff like that. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah, if you want to argue that extra ten dollars, you could say goes to the creation of Miles himself, yeah. right? Because if you're using all the same mechanics to make all of these new different adventures and stuff like that, you know, they could say like, "Hey, do you want a forty dollar game where you play Peter again, or would you throw in an extra ten bucks and get a whole new voice cast? You know, you new get a abilities. whole new, uh, yeah, a whole new character, a story, new cinematics. Like some of the cinematics." were beautiful like i have to say we both played this on the the ps4 i played mine on the ps4 slim and you know that's you know not saying that there's less hardware but it's definitely not the ps4 pro you know the one that can crank out a little bit more and i know you had some glitching issues with mine God, uh, with yours <laughs> i ran into a couple missed frames at the very very end there's like a segment where there's like some snow falling and i just don't think my uh i don't think the playstation could handle just like all of the uh all of the bits flying through the air but beyond that just those couple times things ran totally smoothly for me and the game yeah. just looked beautiful so uh, i have to say the developers did a pretty good job you had a different experience yeah. of course but on my end i it felt like things went pretty smoothly oh i i, I mean I, I don't know if i told you, i bought the playstation 5 version of this game um which mm -hmm. comes with the P playstation 4 version mm -hmm. uh, so and i bought the, the whatever the technically it was like 70 dollars because i got the one that comes with the place a uh, spider-man remastered uh mm -hmm. so whenever i do upgrade to a playstation 5 in like whether it's four years or five years I'll have those games at my disposal already to go back to, mm -hmm. which is cool. I think it's a great game. I think it's fun. I, I mean, the city does feel different. You you go around doing a lot of different stuff. 
Um, they it opens up a little slower, I think, or slower than the um, Spider Man does. Because, like I said, I beat the Spider Man like what the day before it came out. Yeah. Um, so. I- yeah, I mean, this could be due to the fact that the game is a little bit shorter, but the things, the some of the things yeah. I hated the most about the 2018 Spider-Man game was the stealth Mary Jane missions. Those were just kind of pointless, uh-huh. uh, so I'm glad we don't have those in here. But also, I didn't really like all of the hacking things that you could do as Peter. You know, like you could go back to Doc Ock's lab and you could like open up the computer and do like little computer puzzles. Yeah. It's just like I don't, I don't need to do that as Spider-Man. I want to be out there swinging and punching. Don't put me in a lab. Like you got to be Peter like Parker app. to be Spider Man, though. That that's his sto- uh, That was his story. In that, it, I think it fit that story. Yeah, I just didn't like it that. It, yeah. I just didn't like that you were required to do that to unlock things. Yeah. Like you needed to get like I don't know. I don't remember what those are called. Like activity points or whatever yeah. in that game. You know, it's fine if like you need to uncover some sort of file that Doc Ock has hidden to move the story forward. But like, don't make me load do a load screen to go into his lab to do a thing just to get a point well, and go through another load screen to get back on. So I'm just glad you know that stuff wasn't in this. You never game. you didn't you didn't play any of the slapstick challenges or whatever her name was, did you? No, uh, I don't. I don't yeah, think so. you should. You should have done those in Miles. There's, 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 or not Miles in Spider Man 2018. There's a lot more things to hate in that game than what you just. <laughs> oh, okay. Let me tell you that right now. <laughs> but I think also the difficulty in Miles was harder, and I don't know if that's because he's a newer Spider Man and you're not hitting as hard, or like they really reeled back some of it. But I felt that I was challenged at times when I normally wouldn't be as a more seasoned he, Spider Man. I yeah, I do feel like I was more motivated to go stealth. Yeah. Um. Because when some of these underground characters are introduced that have like shields or some of them have like the uh, whip sword or whatever, like Uh I really avoided those people. I was like, no, those dudes are going to F me up and I'm going to have to use all of my venom to heal myself. And like, I've already died like three times. So yeah, yeah, I do kind of like the, how the difficulty ramped up. You play it differently than you play 2018, a wholeheartedly. Yeah. Because the other one, I would go brute force, hands down brute force. Uh, mm. This one, not so much. Those sniper bullets got the best of me Whew. several times. Yeah, you can't you can't just crash into a fortress and just be like, "Hey, I'm here. I'm gonna punch you." Yeah, <laughs> I have eight gadgets to choose from, and now he's like, "I have four. I will tell you, I forgot to upgrade the trip mine because I forget you have to buy the you buy the first upgrade. You don't already own it. Uh huh. So I would beat the whole game without upgrading those um the one one of the gadgets. I think it was like the, oh yeah yeah those mines are invaluable. Those yeah. are so important and, towards the end of the game. And I forgot to upgrade them the whole time. <laughs> I was like, how am I doing this? But it, I I think overall, I don't regret it. This game will be on sale probably at the first of the new year. Uh, if mm-hmm. you don't want to pay fifty dollars, but I don't regret buying. Oh yeah, no, I had, I had a I had a great time. You'd have to be a real stickler, I think, to not get enjoyment out of this game mm. if you liked the twenty eighteen game. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Did you do, uh, were you able to do all the did you all the side missions and the the No, I haven't uh once I once I completed the game, watched the credits and the and the game rolled back to me on top of a building. I haven't had a chance to go get the cat in the backpack and do some of that that extra yeah. fun stuff, so yeah, I'm looking the, forward the, to that. The uh Bogdega cat's Mike's favorite suit and he hasn't got yeah. to, got to do it yet. Uh I've 100% at the first time and on my second I'm on my second playthrough um on the new game plus. So I'm hopefully kind of see how that goes. And mm. handle that so do that but yeah miles morales i mean i think it's great if you got a playstation if you don't have a playstation 4 now is the time to buy a cheap one from someone selling one uh, to get a playstation <laughs> 5 and just get these spider-man games i'd also throw god of war in there mike do you have any other playstation games uh, uh yeah you can play the entire uncharted series yep. you know the earlier game started on ps3 the the fourth one's on ps4 play all the uncharted games play the naughty dog oh, games last of us uh, all the yeah last of us yeah play all those naughty dog games yeah just for the price of a PlayStation 4, you have some primo games that you could be playing. I think Bloodborne is also only yeah. on PlayStation um, if you just want to really tackle a difficult game. Yeah, yeah, there's lots of good stuff on there still, so I, I'd recommend I recommend trying it out. I think I think it's a, a good good option. Uh, switching gears a little, uh, into this, uh, Gindy Tartakovsky, known for, again, uh, Samurai Jack, Dexter's Lab, Primal uh, uncovered some work he did uh, creating a Superman sh- uh, short cartoon. He didn't get to finish it, but he shared his designs here, and I'd love to see this. 
Yeah, very interesting. I, these these obviously look pretty rough uh, for Gendy because uh, you can tell even just kind of like the proportions between a one drawing and the other drawing. Like one Superman's pretty elongated, uh, the other one's just a, a little bit more uh, bulbous, I would say. But yeah, there's definitely a feel and a look and a tone to this, right? With that dark shading, uh -huh. I feel like these dark this this really dark shading reminds me of kind of like what he's doing in Primal. Um, I actually kind of like how this doesn't feel like Gendy that much, right? You know, he does it does seem pretty angular and pretty pointy, but it seems like he decided to go in a little direction. So I would have loved to see him do a little bit more development because I'm sure this design would be refined yeah. even a little bit more. Oh, but I bet he's got more characters we'll see, you know, come out over the next couple of years too. Like I'm sure he's got a Batman, a Wonder Woman, a mm -hmm. Aquaman. I think this would have been cool. Like I would watch this no dialogue. Like, oh yeah, I, and Gendy is the type of person that could pull off no dialogue. Yeah, exactly. So I'd watch this no dialogue, see how it goes. I I, I get more of um again we talked about this earlier the a, a first animated Clone Wars he did like those mm -hmm. um that Mace Windu episode where there's no audio or no uh no dialogue and he's just fighting all those battle droids like mm -hmm. I totally see Superman fighting villains like mobs of villains in in this art style easily and and love every second of it. So, um, yeah, you can check those out. Uh, we got a link to his uh, Instagram where he looks like he posts all sorts of fun stuff on here. Yeah, how am I not following Gindy on Instagram? I guess I didn't know he had one. Follow. Yeah. That was an easy click. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He's only following three, Mike. Maybe you could be the fourth. Oh, man, I'd love that. Yeah. Oh, he's got some, some earlier art of Dexter and Primal in here. Oh, that's fun. Uh, and then his what was his Avengers called that was in Dexter's? Um, oh, Justice Friends. <laughs> Yeah, the Justice Friends. Justice Friends. So that's like I think they're yeah yeah they are Avengers. Yeah, I was gonna say no, I think that was more Justice League, but no, you're right, it is Avengers. Yeah, because we got the Thor and the the Hulk guys, but yeah, that's that's really fun. Check that out. Lastly, the epic movie that we've always wanted, the crossover everyone's clamored for, and now they have a shared <laughs> universe: Godzilla versus King Kong. Uh, it's likely to head to a streaming service instead of theaters, um, which isn't a bad sign. That's just the way things are going now. Mm -hmm. um, Netflix and HBO Max have both put offers in for this film, Mike. So oh. um, I want it to go. I don't care where it goes. I just want to be able to watch the other ones because they might be streaming now. But I feel like every time every time I look up King Kong, the, the, the newer one, and every time I look up the Godzilla's, like I'm in the mood to watch them. So I was like, Oh, I bet they're streaming. They've been out for a couple of years now and they're not streaming. Cause I still haven't seen them yet. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I, I want to watch King Kong, King Kong versus Godzilla. Who the hell wouldn't? I mean, it sounds like a lot of fun. Uh, but yeah, I haven't seen the, the predecessor movies. So if this starts streaming, maybe they'll stream the other ones. I would appreciate that. Yeah, I, I think so. Um, uh, I mean, he, I've seen everything but the King Kong movie. Um, and so you haven't seen either Godzilla film. No, I don't remember the uh, the director's name off the top of my head who did the King Kong movie, but he's supposed to be in development for a Metal Gear Solid movie. So I feel like I really need to watch this King Kong film to see if uh, I think he can. Jordan J Jordan Vote Roberts, I think that's his name. Uh huh. Um, but yeah, I need to see if he if he can tackle it. Yeah, uh, King Kong, King Kong Skull Island. That's what it is. Yeah, it's yeah. not streaming anywhere. Uh, if you have TNT or TBS. Or Direct TV, it looks like you well, might be able to stream HBO it. HBO Max has uh, the newest Godzilla, it looks like. Oh, okay. That was that King of Monsters. King of that Monsters, what, what that yes. was called? Yeah. Uh, which I did see, and that was fun to watch in theaters. It's got some pretty good moments. Um, you might need... Do you need these on, uh, on Chris Flicks? <laughs> I, I mean, I, I, I wouldn't turn my nose up at it, Chris. Yeah, okay. Well, I know these aren't Christmas movies, so I just don't want to make sure... <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not interrupting your Christmas. I'll, I'll, I'll open up like a filter on my Instagram that can put Christmas hats on things that have eyeballs, and okay. then it'll be like I'm watching a Christmas movie. Well, I've seen, you've seen that Christmas thing where people put the Santa hat in the corner, and every time somebody lines up with a oh, Christmas yeah, hat, they take a drink. Oh, yeah, there you go. A way to turn any movie into a Christmas movie. That's right. That's exactly right. So, yeah, Godzilla versus King Kong. I mean, we've not seen a crossover like this since Freddy versus Jason, Mike. Uh, this is... Uh, Alien versus Predator, Godzilla versus King Kong. We've been wanting it for years, and here it is. Um, with this whole was it the uh, Monsters Universe? I guess is what they're calling it, or something like that. So, well, I mean, if Netflix wants to put out a good movie or a, a potentially a better movie than uh, Cloverfield Paradox directly after the Super Bowl's over, this one might be a good idea. Oh, yeah, don't tell anybody. Just let it. Just drop it. That that thing. Yeah. That's how long ago was that? Uh, not long. That enough. was. I mean, <laughs> I, ever I forgot about that until until you saw that so all right mike that's it that's our show that went a little longer than usual but by gosh this was this was for us this wasn't for you yes. guys this was our episode and and we, <laughs> and we did what we wanted. we ate our candy at the top and we had our 
had our talks throughout. So, uh, people want to know what you're up to, what you're doing, where can they find you at? Well, they can find me at Mike Royer Design on Instagram and Twitter, and you can read my web comics at pickledcomics.com. Chris, if people want to catch up with you, where can they find you? You can find me on Twitter, Valdan, V A L D A N, or Instagram, Valdan87. Uh, head over there, hit me up. Uh, you can also play games with me online. Again, uh, the, the Galactus event in Fortnite is Tuesday. Uh, if anyone's if anyone's doing that, let me know what you think about it. Um, people want to know more about our show, more maybe listen to Tenant Review, any other reviews we've done. Uh, well, what is it? We just did New Mutants a couple weeks ago, or any other things mm-hmm. we episodes we put out. Where can people find us at? All you got to do is visit SuperheroSlate.com. That is the hub for the show. That is the best place to find our show notes. So you can see that uh, picture of Hawkeye that we put up there. So you can see him looking like that Matt Fraction run. If you want to get the link to Gendy's Instagram account, which I'm glad I was able to find, we have that in our show notes. And you can also find us on Apple Podcasts, YouTube, Spotify, and wherever else you love to listen to find podcasts. We are up there as well. Please like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter mm-hmm. and the gram, and you can get swag at SuperheroSlate.com slash store we love hearing from you uh please reach out if you've seen tenant we want to know what your review is what did you think of that fifth episode of mandalorian uh uh, we had a great time are you really confused on who the hell ahsoka is do you need to know what clone wars episodes to watch uh chris has that information for you he will give you the best ahsoka episodes uh to watch and you can just like speed run your way to catch up with everybody else um so reach out we'd love to hear from you and if you want to be a super fan of this show All you got to do is share the show with a friend, share the show with a buddy, wear a mask, socially distance until that vaccine is available. And we will be here every week. And if we can, we'll pry a second episode out of our cold, dead hands like we did with Tenet this week. That's right. When you least expect it, a review. That's right. (laughs) There you go. Another week. And uh, thanks for the the shout outs. We uh, we had a shout out in the YouTube comments earlier this week. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I love it when you people reach out. It's great. We love it. We love you. Have a happy holidays, and we'll see you next week. All right. Bye, everybody. Thanks for listening, and don't forget to subscribe. Man, the number of Ahsoka spoil. Uh, never mind. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs>